right, what is up, everybody? Uh, I'm dressed in all black like a cat burglar tonight. Uh, no, I'm just uh, doing some some laundry over uh, at the other side of the the hotel there. Um, so I want to talk briefly about uh, how a lot of times when we get really low in our addictions and our alcoholism and all that nonsense, uh, we lose everything. You know, we lose our family, we lose our finances, we lose our health. A lot of times we lose our freedom. Uh, I've done 10 and a half years in, in prison. Uh, I've been out for a handful of years and just crushing it. But there were times in my life where, you know, I drank so much and used so many drugs to fill that void of uh, not being able to see my daughter and my son. Um, you know, and then it would just be a vicious cycle. The drugs and alcohol would wear off and I would be left with myself. And uh, I wouldn't know how to deal with the, the hurt and the pain, so I would just use and drink more and more. And it just exacerbated uh, just all the nonsense in my life, you know, just a nasty, nasty cycle. However, I'm here to tell you guys that may think that uh, our family is gone forever, that we've done unspeakable things that people won't forgive us for. Um, that's our past. We can't change the past. We can't do a damn thing about it. But we sure can change the future and we sure can change the present and how we live today. You know, it's not a guarantee that our families are going to come back to us. It's not a guarantee that we're going to get our health back. It's, you know, none of this stuff is guaranteed. But what we do get as a guarantee is another day and another opportunity to make the best out of it. Um, you know, years ago, I stopped planning expectations and uh, outcomes and I stopped expecting anything, you know, and I just take care and handle my business today on a moment by moment basis. And I've been one of the lucky ones uh, to stay sober for a long time and to have my family come back to my life. Um, back in 2008, uh, my mom said, Bo, uh, you're out of the family. Um, she had a stroke, she had hypertension. She had, you know, everything I was doing, I was manipulating her for money. I was lying, I was cheating. I was in and out of jail and prison. I was just a horrible, ungrateful ingrate of a son, uh, drunk and high all the time. And uh, she did it for her, for her own health, her own mental health, her own state of being, uh, well-being. And I'll just fast forward, you know, 14, 15 years. And my mom and I are, you know, some of the closest that we've ever been in our entire life. Uh, you know, my sister uh, stayed with me for a long time. She would fly in for my parole hearings every time I was in prison. But she was not happy with me either. But I think she felt a sense of uh, guilt, maybe, that she didn't have the childhood that I had. You know, all the abuse and the nastiness and everything. And that's not an excuse. So anyways, fast forward, I'm here to tell you that my 27 year old son and I are talking. Uh, I'm so proud of him. He's an, a photographer, lives in Nashville, Tennessee. And my 24 year old daughter is just the most beautiful, beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life, Ashley. And so this Friday, um, Ashley and I have become very good friends over the years, uh, closer and closer. And I've been able to be a dad and a granddad to, to her first child. I kind of feel like I get a do over. Um, and she's coming with her family to pick me up and we're all going to Pullman, Washington, a little town uh, in, uh, you know, in Washington State, uh, Eastern Washington, to watch my sister's basketball team. Uh, my sister's the head coach of the University of Colorado Lady Buffaloes, number six in the country. And it's just a miracle. Myself, my daughter, my grandson, my son-in-law and a few friends, we're all just going to mob up there and, uh, and meet my sister not meet her, you know, but just see her and, and give her hugs and cheer her team on and everything. And my point is, guys, whoever's listening to this is that don't ever give up on your dreams, you know, don't ever give up on your hopes. Don't ever think that we've done too much and life is over and family is gone. Yeah, it might be temporary, you know, but I am so grateful to be clean and sober today. I would never have the relationship that I have with my mom, my sister, uh, my daughter, my grandson, my son-in-law, my son, uh, just important people in my lives that, you know, just a handful of years ago when I was sitting it down on my third time going to the state penitentiary, nobody wanted to have a damn thing to do with me. So I got out, I licked my wounds, I accepted responsibility for every last thing in my life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I got out of victim mentality and I got into taking responsibility and accountability for everything. And uh, these days it's just an, just just incredible. It's it's a culmination of a lot of hard work on my part, a lot of forgiveness on my family's part, and none of this would be even remotely capable if I wasn't clean and sober today. So uh, I wish everybody out there who may see this, um, who may be struggling with alcoholism, drug addiction, what have you, uh, you know, not, you know, comparing our insides to other people's outsides, 
you know, thinking everybody looks so wonderful and why are we so lonely and why do we not fit in? Well, that's not true. That's just fear. False evidence appearing real is the acronym that I use for fear. And it's a bunch of bullshit is what it is. So take charge of your life. If you need to reach out, reach out to me, reach out to anybody out there who will be support for you and know that it ain't over, man. It's just beginning with sobriety and recovery. I love you. God bless.